hey, toy fans, collectors, and industry folks. Today, I am talking about how to get a job in the toy industry. And, well, I'm going to use my story because it's kind of interesting. And I get asked this actually quite a lot when I do like podcasts or interviews with fan sites is how in the world did I get my job at Mattel? So let's jump in. Quick introduction, I'm Scott Knightlick, aka Toy Guru on a lot of the forums, and I was with Mattel for just a smidgen under 10 years, and during that time, I really had a dream job. I was working on toys, which is what I always wanted to do. I was in meetings, talking about toys. I mean, it was it was pretty mind-blowing. And I get asked all the time, how in the world did I you know, get this job? How did I get into Mattel and working on brands that I love, like He-Man and DC and Ghostbusters and, you know, that kind of stuff. So I'll tell that quick story and maybe it'll help uh, inspire you. So growing up in Southern California, I would always see the old Mattel building in Hawthorne off the side of the freeway. Every time we drove from Orange County to Los Angeles, you would pass this big brick building with the Mattel logo on the side. And, you know, it was like right there. And as, you know, a 10 year old, a seven year old, you're like, wow, there's a toy company right there. Cause you would, you would see it right off the freeway. Mattel eventually moved to El Segundo. Uh, but that giant logo on the building was kind of, you know, ingrained into my mind. And knowing that there was a giant toy corporation right here, sort of, you know, in my backyard, quote unquote, definitely gave me the thought of possibly working there one day. Now, my father worked for a company called Yonix, which uh, he was a vice president of, I think, product development in their tennis division. That's actually why we moved to California from Connecticut. And one of his coworkers, her husband, was a Mattel executive in the 80s and used to, because uh, he knew that my father had young children at home, would get us the Mattel catalog every year. Now this is a industry catalog that is basically given to retailers who want to place orders for product. It's not a, you know, like a public catalog, like the Sears catalog was, if you will. But as, as a kid getting the Mattel catalog, this was like mind blowing because it had pictures of all the upcoming, you know, He-Man toys and, and uh, I don't want to say Batman toys. There were no Batman toys from Mattel at the time. There were some Secret Wars Marvel figures, you know, but I mean, everything from Munchie Cheese to Barbie to Hot Wheels to Mad Scientist, uh, it was all there. So I went on after high school to uh, UC Santa Barbara which was about three hours north of Los Angeles. And a big reason that I went there is they had a great film and media department, which that was my major. Uh, I, I started as a film major. I eventually actually added communications as a second major since I wanted to uh, get a, sort of a more well-rounded education. But my goal was to become a screenwriter. Uh, I actually wanted to write TV commercials was what I thought I would do. Uh, I definitely had that writing bug and Right after college, after I graduated, I applied to several openings at Mattel, and I got a nice postcard back from them saying, we, ha we you know, received your application, thank you very much, we'll keep it on file for six months, and every six months I would resend in my application, and then I would get another postcard, and I think I still have these postcards, I like kept every single one of them. Um, but they would basically keep sending me these postcards in the mail telling me, you know, thank you for applying. We will hold on to your material for six months. Uh, if we need you, we'll contact you. And I've never heard back from anything but the postcards. So with knowing, you know, I was hitting that postcard sort of uh, stop in the road, I wound up working for a company called Allergan, which is a pharmaceutical company. And I got a job as a writer working for them. And I wrote print ads and medical material for them on their beauty accounts uh, and their Botox and glaucoma accounts. I could tell you more about glaucoma and how it works than you probably ever want to know. I actually kind of feel like I have a, a medical degree in glaucoma. I had to analyze all of these uh, what are called empirical studies and pull out results and figure out how to take those results and turn them into headlines and everything had to be backed up by all the legalese. Now, of course, writing print ads definitely gave me, you know, insight into, you know, being a copywriter, which 
I was eventually able to use at Mattel. I, I wrote all of my own print ads when I was in marketing, but that's, you know, how I got into marketing is a story for another time. But, it, you know, it was kind of cool that I was able to sort of take that skill set of writing ads and apply it to toys in the long run. All right, so here I am working for Allogan, doing glaucoma print ads, and going to Comic-Con, as I did every year, because that's what I did, and I wandered over to the Mattel booth, as I do every year, to check out the latest cool stuff. And back in 2004, the booth was a little different. It was more kind of about the brands and less about Mattel, uh, with those giant sort of posters in the air. And I happened to meet a gentleman named Eddie Hayden, who was the brand manager for Justice League at the time, the, the Justice League Bruce Timm figures, the, uh, the little four-inch figures, which, ironically, I went on to brand manage. But again, story for another time. So Eddie is the brand manager at this point in the Justice League when they were back on blue card. So this was like the first two years of the line, uh, mostly when they really only had the original league. This is way before Justice League Unlimited came about, when it was just kind of the core members. And getting to talk to him, uh, one thing that I came to realize that he, was that the legalese in pharmaceutical advertising is very transferable to the legalese in toy advertising or writing on packaging because you have to know, you know, there, there's so many legal disclaimers and there's so many copyrights and so many, you know, legal marks and all sorts of things that have to be included in toys. And this is actually quite a skill set. I didn't realize that this was a skill set being able to navigate sort of legalese with copy. And that's what opened the door for me with Mattel. Hot Wheels was looking for a packaging junior copywriter to join their team. And when I showed them my portfolio, Eddie was able to get me an interview. He was impressed with my portfolio that I had with me at Comic-Con. They saw my ability to do the legalese and pharmaceutical as very transferable to what they needed in the Hot Wheels packaging group, someone who could navigate that. Now, I will say, you know, fast forwarding years later, when I was with Mattel and going to Comic-Con, I would have people coming up to me every day asking how to get a job at Mattel. And I would ask them, well, what do you want to do? And they would just say, I want to make toys, very sort of generically. So I think a big thing that, you know, where I stood apart was the fact that I had a professional portfolio and I had work that was applicable, meaning, again, being able to navigate promotional copy and legal needs at the same time, which the pharmaceutical industry and what I didn't realize was the toy industry also needs. So I got my first job at Mattel at the Hot, in the Hot Wheels group. Uh, I, it, I was four months between my interview and the job offer, which was, of course, antagonizing. But eventually I got a call back and they liked what they saw. They, they also liked that I sort of had a passion for toys in general. And that, you know, because most people in the toy industry or at Mattel are just kind of, you know, people working on consumer product. The fact that I also love toys definitely pushed me ahead. So it was really a combination of the fact that I had a passion for toys and I had a skill set that Mattel needed. And the job I wound up getting was as the uh, copywriter on basic Hot Wheels, which means I would work with designers. Like in this case, this is a Larry Wood design for a car he created. And uh, if you don't know who Larry Wood is, you can Google him. He was, he's quite a uh, famous Hot Wheels designer. So they would take their sketches, turn them into real cars, and then it would be up to the copywriter to help come up with a name for that car, as well as the names on you know, all the play sets, et cetera, and all those words. Now, this is obviously a long way from me becoming the brand manager on Maddie Collector and on DC Universe and moving over to the marketing group. That is a whole story for another time. But I hope that this video at least kind of shed some light on how I got my foot in the door with Mattel. And I think that's the key for people who, you know, want to work at Mattel and say, want to work on He-Man. It doesn't always work like that. It's, it's all about kind of getting that first job at, at a company and then maybe moving your way over to the group or the brand you want to work on in time. You're not necessarily going to start right away on something like He-Man. It's something I built up to after several years and was able to get to work on that. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or more information, let me know in the comments below. Love a subscription and a thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in the toy aisle.